Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the first in a monthly series of webcasts sponsored by the CompuWare Account Consultants. Today's topic is Advent Aid's Fault Analytics, The Unsung Hero. My name is Terry Capriotti, and with me is Dave Karchman from our Field Technical Services Organization. Over the next 20 to 30 minutes, Dave will introduce you to Fault Analytics, followed by a short Q&A session. Just a few quick household items. Please hold your questions till the end, or you can send them to me via chat, and please mute your phones. Now, I will hand it over to Dave. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. As Terry mentioned, for the next 20, 30 minutes, I'm going to be talking about a component that probably not many of you have ever heard of, and it's called Fault Analytics. I'm going to talk a little about what is it, um, what kind of functionality you get in Fault Analytics, what kind of reports you can get, and some features and functionality that may be very valid for you in your current organization. Now, if you're a systems programmer and you've done your Abinate installs, you've obviously seen this configuration panel. And it, you'll see that, all right, you want to configure your Abinate viewer. You can select whether you want Abinate batch or Abinate for CICS. You want to configure the Abinate product, the Abinate for CICS product. If you have DB2 or IDMS, you can configure that. And there, there's this cryptic fifth option, configure Abinate fault an analytics. Well, what is it? Very simply, fault analytics, fault analytics is an additional component to the Abinade tool set. And what it does is it automatically collects faults that occur on your mainframe system. Not just admins, but other faults and interruptions of service. And by collecting these and accumulating them and putting them out there in a readable format, it can sometimes help you quickly and efficiently identify potential problems that occur in your environment quickly. Now, these events, as they are gathered, are accumulated in, in a queue within the started task on the mainframe called the, the Fault Analytics c Collector. This is set up here, and then it communicates via TCP IP to the Fault Analytics web server, which can be installed under Windows, COS Unix, or Z Linux. And it is actually the CompuWare Enterprise server. Now, this data is then, these events are then accumulated in databases. One of three is by default we install a Derby database, but you also have the ability to store these events in SQL databases or D ZOS DB2 databases. If you plan on using ZOS DB2 databases, we do provide DDL scripts for your DBAs to use in order to ensure that the migration and the implementation of fault analytics feeding events into DB2 goes very smoothly. What are the capabilities of fault analytics? One of the beauty of, beauties of fault analytics is that you are able to see faults that occur in real time through web-based report access. And the reports that we're talking about are nearly 100 different reports right out of the box. And as I mentioned earlier, it's not just reporting on advents that occur in your environment. We also report on JCL errors, if you wish, um, non-zero return codes within a specific program name, um, snap aids, uh, advents that occur. Um, even we have um, an API that you can invoke if you want to generate UI-generated events as well. For example, if you have a datacom environment and you want to start logging the datacom failures, you can have it write an API, there's an API available for you to actually feed that information into fault analytics. We have ways by generating rules to filter the events that get stored. We can generate events uh, based on rules and criteria. We can send out notifications if certain criteria are reached, if a certain advent occurs that you deem critical to your environment. Uh, we can generate 
uh, an event and email notification to a group mail, to a pager. All this can be done through rules. We can also send an immediate notification. We can send a report immediately to a single person or to a distribution list. And, and what happens occurs in a number of our clients is that they can schedule reports at a certain time to be delivered to a distribution list. For example, where perhaps your development management wants to meet with your development managers on a weekly basis and you want to basically go over the types of faults that occur in your environment. And if the Abinid reports are still in the Abinid report database, when you look at one of the particular events within Fault Analytics, you actually have a URL that you can tie in directly to the Abinid report itself. Now, how does all this work? You'll see on the schematic here on the mainframe in the blue boxes, it talks about the different kinds of faults that occur. You have Abinade for batch faults, Abinade for CICS. You've got snap dumps. You've got a number of different types of faults that occur in your environment. As those faults occur, we can feed those faults through, through the fault analytics collector, through TCP IP, to the fault analytics server on whichever platform you decide to install it on. Now they in turn get written out to either SQL, Derby, or DB2 database, and you can access the viewing of these events through the fault analytics browser. Now a little word about when you get to look at the browser, there's a lot of customization that you can do manually on the fly when you look at these reports. You have the ability to go in and you can set the date range of the reports that you want to look at. You can, by default, your, your administrator may set it up one way, but you can go in there and change that default maybe from last month to today. What are the faults that occurred today or this week? And whatever you set up as your date range will then be displayed over to the right. You also have the ability to have this report automatically, since we're looking at it in real-time mode, automatically refresh. And it'll show you the time frame remaining before it does another refresh. We also have the ability to go in here and force it to refresh. Now we can go in and say, okay, I understand I'm looking at the report this way, but maybe I want to drill down and see different information than what the default report is. I can do that as well. I can set the auto refresh times. Usually the minimum is two minutes. But the last couple that you see there is if I wanted to send this email to somebody or to a distribution list, I could click on that icon, a window would pop up, and it would ask me who do I want to send it to, an email or a distribution list. And if you didn't have a distribution list set up, you could go in and actually do one on the fly. You could actually schedule this report to be generated on a specific day, weekly, monthly, whatever your time frames are. So there's a lot of fluidity, fluidity and functionality available here. But let's, for just a couple minutes, because I really want to get you over to the live product, talk about the type of reports that you have. You have time-based reports. This is where you're looking at reports based on the day, on the hour, on the week, on the year, and it controls what you're looking at, all the faults on the mainframe, maybe just DB2, maybe IMS, maybe CICS or batch, etc. And then you can customize these a little bit further. You have what are also called topic-based reports. These also, you can change the time span, and you can change the topic. You can also say, I just want to look at batch admins, or CICS admins. And you can customize the report parameters the way you want to see them. A third option are what we call the specialty reports. Those specialty reports are special reports that our clients at one time or another have asked us to make for them. And this one in particular is a really neat one that one of the QA groups wanted to do where they wanted to keep track of the compiled date and compare it against the time that the date that the admin occurred. And they would notice during the testing 
If admins occurred in certain programs more frequently when they were compiled more recently, they would hold them back for additional testing. So, you know, things like this, there's specialty reports available out there as well. You also have summary reports that you can actually drill down, and if it shows you that you had 105 program admins in a certain job name, you could actually see the summary breakdown for those as well. Going a little bit further, if you have the ability, if the Avenade report is out there, as I mentioned earlier, you can literally click, there's an AA icon, you can click on it, and if that Avenade report is still in the Avenade report database, you can tab down and actually see the Avenade report. As far as customization, if I want a specific report that I want somebody to take a look at, I can push that report and send it to them send it to a manager, I could send it to a distribution list, and I could basically tailor the information that's available out there. I also have the ability to do real-time notification of faults that occur as well. For the administrator, I can set up rules. These rules give the ability to filter out different types of faults that occur that you really don't care any information about. Let me give you an example. If you have TSO timeouts, system 522s, you really don't care that somebody timed out on their TSO. Why tie up the, the space on the database for TSO timeouts? So you can define a rule within here, and it can be set up actively or inactively that if you have a system 5, 522 admin, you can go ahead and delete it. couple minutes we've been talking about looking at some screenshots and some functionality some different types of screens and reports you can get but let's actually look at the live product right now what you see on your screen right now is off my web browser and I've gone in to look at fault analytics and I have the ability to look at reports and because I'm set up as an administrator I can set certain preferences I can go into administration and I also have admin dates set up but let's just talk a little bit about the reports. So I'm going to click on reports, and these are the reports that you get right out of the box. And there's over 100 of them by the time you can go in and modify what the primary criteria are and the secondary criteria. As I mentioned before, you can look at reports by time period. You can look at reports by the topic. You can look at reports, different kind of specialized ones that we've done for various clients. Well, let's start off with one. I want to look at all the mainframe admins that have occurred during whatever the default time frame was. So when I click on that mainframe, a window comes up. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'm going to move this little capture button over here. And it shows me that the date range is this month, and it shows me uh, the date range from April 1st through April 30th. Now, perhaps I don't really want to look at that. I want to look at just this week. I could go in here and change it to this week, and it'll do an automatic refresh, and it'll show me just those admins that have occurred this week, which would be yesterday, Sunday, or, or Monday, or today, Monday. Already, we've already had six, 69 admins. So if I wanted to see a breakdown from there, I could either click on the hyperlink from here. I could click on the bar click on that and it breaks it down a little bit further and it shows me the different jobs that have amended and I can look at a few of these and if I wanted to see a little more of a breakdown of the different types of jobs I could go here to AA124 Cal click on that and it gives me this summary report showing me the different types of admins that have occurred uh, that occurred just today and it gives you the date and time summary information. If I do have, for instance, reason, if I do happen to have the Abinade report out there, I can try and see if it's still out there. I can click on AA, and it may ask me for my user ID, which it does. And in this particular case here, it brings up my PL1 report because I did have access to Abinade. So I can actually drill down I can look at the actual procedure, break down to the hyperlinks, and see all that kind of information. So all that information is out there now for you to view, just from that one screen. But let's look at some of the other things that are out here. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and 
close this one screen out right here and let's let's look down a little bit further and I'm going to back up to another type of report and let's take a look at let's say I want to look at CICS admins and again the default is this month but let's say I want to change the parameters and let's say for the sake of argument I don't really want the default to be this month I really want it to be let's say this week so I'm going to go back into my fault analytics and I'm going to go into my preferences because I want to change that default time period to maybe this week and by doing that and clicking save I've changed it so from this point on if I go back to my reports and I now click on that same CICS report you'll see now the changes this week and I've only had one CICS admin this week which which is okay it's early early in the week but let's say to get something a little more representative let's look at last full week so I'm going to click on last full week and it shows me the different regions but I don't want to look at regions per se I want to change it and I want to go in and I want to look at perhaps the CICS transactions that I've mended and maybe the program that I've mended as a secondary drop down so I reload that report and it shows me here that I had a number of them that had XCB2, SSC1, XASM. I'm going to click on that XCB2, and it shows me that CWDEM CB2 was the ad bending program. So I can click on this a little bit further. It shows me the detail report. And again, if the ad bending report is available, I click on AA. It'll ask me for my user ID. And it brings up my admin report so you can go from the most generic down to the actual detail itself all this is done within within fault analytics let's look at some other things that are available here and I'm gonna go back a little bit further here and let's say for the sake of argument I want to send this report to me I can click on that email report and I have my own distribution list, but I could create a new one just by clicking new and let's just call it Dave 2. And I could send it to I can I, I could send it here to David Kartzman again. Click apply, click OK. And it's there and I just drop down to Dave 2 and I send and close now in the next few minutes I should see a window pop up here if my email were up and I'd see a window come up with an email notification that indeed I got an email notification right here that I have a report to be viewed so I just click on this click on the hyperlink shows the emailed report and hopefully in the next few seconds you now see the report now this same report can be scheduled and sent to other people so let's say you had your CICS administrators or you wanted to do batch or you wanted your senior management to see all the admins who are out there you could send a report and schedule it for example if I wanted to send the top CICS events by CICS transaction and I wanted to go in here and I wanted to schedule this delivery here I could call this CICS admins by transaction weekly and I could set this frequently frequency to weekly and let's say the time is one minute after midnight 
and the next date would let's say would be let's say let's call it the um, 30th so then one minute after midnight on the 30th it would be sent to whatever distribution list I wanted and I could go in and in another distribution list app apply and it's done so that a Sunday night at midnight I'm going to get a copy of this report showing me the events that occurred in the previous week it's got a lot of power for just a regularly small small program like this but let's look at some other things that are out here as well in the administration I can go in and set up my own email just like I did before I could set up my email I could actually go in here and set up templates so if I notify somebody about an email I could actually drop in template information like this for a batch abandoned I could show you the the name the type the job name the program the error code the programmer name all this stuff that's gotten from Abinade could all be embedded within that email and you can set that up to be scheduled as well other things that can be done within this within the administration is I can go in here and set up what are called rules and rules are really powerful and one of the ones I did earlier for somebody, and I'll, I'll do it again, I'll go ahead and just delete this, is one of the admins that you don't really want to look at are admins where somebody times out by a TSO. But a 522 is still an admin. So you would normally be getting an event notification. So I'm going to go ahead and define a new event rule. And I'm going to say no system 522 admins. And I'll call it active from this point on. And I'm not going to set any conditions. I don't want to have it occur X number of times. I want it to occur every time that it occurs. And so I'm going to add the condition if the error code, which is the admin code, is equal to, and it's capital 5S 522, then in my options here I have a drop down and I can delete the event now if I have certain admins that I want to be notified about I could define a rule if transaction code equals ABCD then I want and I can drop down and send an event to a distribution list notifying you that this transaction has occurred when you're done just hit OK so anytime an, an event comes through here, it checks against each one of these rules. And if it gets through all these, it then gets written out, the server and then writes it out to the database. And then when you're looking at the reports, you can look at these reports live. And any of the rules that pass these four that you see listed here will all be out there in the reports. So in, in summary, Fault Analytics is a really powerful tool that you can use both in your in your DevOps environment by your uh, your operations people by your system programmers by your managers it, it's a tool that's an adjunct and an add-on that's already part of the Abinade tool but tool product and it's something that I think might be worthy you're taking a better look at so at this point I want to go ahead and finish up and summarize well, that was a fairly whirlwind um, trip I took you through fault analytics, but I hope you can see that there's a lot of power and a lot of information at your hands uh, just by going in through the reports, customizing them the way you want, having the ability to go out there, define rules, uh, identify what reports you want to schedule, what reports you want to notify somebody about, all these things that you can do within Fault Analytics. And, and just a couple last points here. Fault Analytics really has a significant place in the DevOps story because these reports can help you focus on faults that occur in your environment that can impact your service level agreements, help you pinpoint where to focus your resources on failures that occur 
uh, against uh, important tasks or t transactions that fail frequently that consume cycles. And basically every cycle you save is a cycle that another application can work can use to, to its own benefit. So it's, it's a wonderful tool that if you're interested, we would be happy to work with you and get all that, help you get started so you can start taking advantage of the reports. But before we get to the questions, I do want to show you one other thing that CompuWare has been doing that may be providing some value to you for those of you who have clients that have Splunk product as well as SyncSort's IronStream. Abinate can generate SMF records that can be fed into SyncSort's Iron Stream and formatted so that you can actually build within Splunk a dashboard of the types of admins that occur in your environment. Now, the information available this way is not nearly as detailed. You don't have the ability to go in and look at the Abinade report, but it does give you a good overall view of the types of faults that have that occur within your environment. So if you would like help on getting this set up, please get with your account consultant and they can uh, have one of our systems people get with you and work with you on getting that set up. The next webcast is going to be on Thursday, May 18th, from 11.30 to about 12.10. And it's going to be done by one of our field technical support specialists on source support best practices for enabling effortless debugging within Topaz. So if your site is looking at Topaz, is using Topaz, and wants to take advantage of source support, we strongly recommend your attending this presentation for some really valuable tips. So to finish out here, um, we do have a few questions that were asked, and I'd ask, uh, let's go ahead and ask the questions. Great, Dave. Yes, they have come in. The first question says, who are the typical users of the fault analytics? That, that's, a, and that's a really excellent tool, and thank you very much for bringing that up. Um, the answer is a lot of different people. For example, production control. We have a client that used to put one of the snapshot uh, windows that we had where it shows the number of admins that occur by the hour and breaks it down. They went and broke it down by batch, CICS, DB2, and they could actually see it updated every couple minutes on one of their command windows so they could actually see when admins were coming across rather quickly and they could take action really very quickly there. Um, other people that really use it are your managers. They want to look at the types of admins that occur in your environment. These reports can be broken out, as one of our clients has, can be broken out by business unit, can be broken out by the manager name even, uh, through some rules that they've defined. And you can literally sit, the senior manager sits there once a week with his development managers and they go through the types of production admins that occur for each of the business units. Uh, system programmers can take a look at these reports as well. Your CICS administrators, the IMS administrators, your, your, your DB2 administrators to look at the types of failures that occur in your environment. A lot of people can gain a lot of information from these reports. That was a great question. Thank you. The next one. Great. Uh, it reads, does the switch over to the Avondade viewer require a single viewer for batch and CICS, or can it support multiple Avondade viewers? Another excellent question. Uh, it can support multiple Avondade viewers across is, uh, any area where you have TCP IP control. If you you're, can feed events from one assistplex to an, to a web browser, I'm sorry, to the web server on another on another plex, and just feed that information. You can actually get a snapshot of all of the admins across your enterprise, and that's been done. So the answer is there is no limitation on this. Great question, thank you. Next, Great. I th I think we have time for just a couple more here. Um, is Avondade Fault Analytics a separate product? I don't recall seeing that option when I installed Avondade. 
Avondale Fault Analytics is actually part of the Avondale tools. Um, if you recall back in the very beginning when I showed you the Avondale configuration and customization screen, one of the options that was out there was configure Avondale Fault Analytics. That was actually the Avondale, the Avondale collector. It's actually part of the Avenade Common Components. Now, the web server is part of the CompuWare web products, and you can download CES off, um, off, off a front line or contact your AC or your salesman and have license management send you a copy, and you can install it. And when you install CES, you specify you want to install Fault Analytics, and it will set up the database for you. And then by setting up the parameters as it's documented in the, in, in the, in the, fault, in the Avenade Fault Analytics Collection Manual, as well as in the web-based products and get the port numbers assigned, you can start feeding events almost immediately. Good question. Thank you. And the last question before we close, what releases are Fault Analytics available under? Uh, Fault Analytics is currently available on all releases from 12.4 on. However, we strongly recommend that if you're going to install Fault Analytics that you install it using Abendade uh, release 17.2 because the the web server based uh, component of this has been made the installation has been made dramatically easier under 17.2 than in previous releases. So if you can do it under uh, release 17.2 of the web services as well as Abendade, I think you're going to find the install experience a much more satisfying experience. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you, Dave. Thanks, Terry, for a great presentation. Very insightful, very helpful. Um, we look forward to having everyone join us for our next uh, webcast coming up again on May 18th um, with uh, Scott Smith, our account consultant, uh, Tips and Tricks Revealed. And this concludes today's presentation. Have a great day.